test. Just not in the mood to do anything today. I was going to talk about. That's a sick car. I was going to talk about. The record, man, turned out so good. Turned out so good, man. Um, at least the songs that we did so far. So, I didn't know what to expect when I got there. Because I was going through, remember, I was going through all this stuff like, you know, I don't, I don't know what, what kind of band I'm going to get, who, what players I'm going to have, if these songs are going to go this way, if they're going to go that way, and then I'm going to get a little like this or that, you know, but I had, I had an idea for the spirit that I wanted in the music. So I tried to make sure I held on to that. And then I got some time in Nashville, um, through some good friends of mine, set it up for me and, um, you know, to go do a little demo. And so I just took off, I took all my guitars, all the guitars that I made, man. I took the acoustic that I made, I took the 10 string, I took the fucking mod, the whammy bar, I took that, and I didn't know, you know, I get there, and, you know, maybe we'll just lay down some heavy stuff, and then I'll bring in, you know, a band later, or maybe I'll do this, and it, and I was like, well, okay, well, first, no matter what, I'm gonna just put the essence of the song down with the acoustic guitar, so I get there, um, you know, and they, they set me up with an engineer, uh, and let me just say, man, this guy is was a godsend but anyway so i get there more about him later but i get there um and i got all the guitars and i come in and we go to the, one of the smaller rooms and uh, i start playing the guitars you know start warming up and stuff like that i'm mean, pretty nervous you know I mean, this is it you know i've been mean, like planning this for like two years <laughs> and here it is man you better be good so i, I got it all planned out and uh we're in there and I'm playing the guitars, you know, my, my, the first day I'm just going to run through the, the guitar tracks, just a basic, try to get the rhythm down to a click, you know, and hopefully I'll be able to, you know, divorce myself enough from the click that it still has the feel I want. And, um, and then we'll just kind of go from there. We'll either add electrics to it and bring bands in or we'll do this, we'll do that. I don't know. So I'm, you know, warming up and doing the songs and singing them, you know, singing to myself a little bit as I'm playing, like I do when I write and we go through and we cut, cut the tracks and, and, I could tell right away that the engineer was was kind of like intrigued after a little while, like, wow, this this stuff might be pretty good. You know, he kind of liked it. He kind of connected with it, which is, a, man, a beautiful thing. And immediately he kind of started taking over like, um, hey, man, why don't we, you know, cut this section right here, man, jump to this section. Oh, what you did right there was killer. You know, do that again. Um, like this, man, bah, do, bah, you know, like that, do it like that. You know, so immediately he's kind of producing, and I'm like, oh, that's pretty fucking cool, um, because everything he was suggesting was kind of right in my wheelhouse, and I was like, yeah, you know, this is this is working out pretty good. I was pretty stoked. Um, so we we do the we do the tracks, and we we lay down like four tracks of four different tunes um, with the acoustic, and we kind of rearrange them a little bit and got him, and he's like, oh man, it's just gonna be sick, man. So he's like, man, we gotta put a drummer on there. He was thinking about already thinking about some drummer that he wanted to bring in and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, cool, man. So I went back to the hotel and then uh, came the next day and started to sing. And I got out the first one. I started singing. I'm like, ah, you know, I'm singing like, you know, like I'm, I, I better sing these things. They're going to sing out. And um, we go through like two takes, man. And he just, I look in the studio and he's like this. And he goes, uh, dude, um, I'm going to say something. Don't take it the wrong way. And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> this guy, <laughs> I'm like... Uh, I'm like, fuck, man, I knew it. I, I fucking suck. I can't sing, man. So he's like, you remember that voice you had when you were just practicing and just kind of laying the, the tracks down for the guitar? That little whisper, that kind of really soft whisper? He's like, that's how I want you to sing it. That's how I want you to sing all the songs. And I was kind of torn. I was like, you know, at first, my first reaction was like, what? fuck, dude, I'll just run it again, man. I'll sing it. But I knew that I didn't have that. I knew. I, I but I always liked that other sound that I had because that's how I write all the songs. I always wrote them that way. So I, I wasn't like I was kind of like, all right, fuck yeah, let's go. Because I already had a trust in him too. So I was like, yeah, 
you know? I mean, I was kind of half thinking of that. The only problem, the only reason I never really kind of wanted to do that was just like, well, how the hell are you ever supposed to play that live? I mean, you have to turn the mic up so fucking loud, they'll like hit their dishes in the back coming through with the bus boy and shit. And I was like, this is never going to work. But anyway, we were just recording, so I was like, yeah. Um, so it just, I had to sing this like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I probably can't do now. You know, there's a certain tone, and I didn't really know how to get the tone. He was like, no, dude, that's the tone right there. And then I'd deviate from me, like, no, back, that's it right there, that's the tone. It was like a breathy, it was like a gut, thing. it's a breathy, I don't know, whisper, I don't know what the fuck it was. But anyway, we did all the tracks like that, and um, he's just getting more excited. He's like, dude, this shit's going to be fucking sick, man. It sounds great. It's like, I, you've never heard anything like this. It's a, this is going to go great. I already know. I'm going to bring this drummer in, dude, and he's not going to play a full set. He's coming in with like a fucking kick and a snare and a hi-hat. That's it. Um, and he's just going to lay down a little beat in the background and this and this and this. And I was like, yeah, fucking okay. And I'm like, okay, going to, because by this time he's like, he's turned into the producer. You know, I got a producer and I didn't really pay for a producer, you know? Um, and, and so I, I'm internally grateful. I wanted to make sure I say that to Tim for taking that role and being there and, and, and adding these things. And it just worked out really good. Um, so, uh, that was that. And then, so we came back the next day and we brought in a drummer and this drummer, man, he brought in a great drummer. And, and I've always worried about drummer because your rhythm is so critical to what you do. Um, that's your fingerprint is, is, is much in the rhythm as it is in how you choose to harmonize and how you choose your, your melodies and what chords you choose to go to. Your rhythm is in there too. And, and, and nowadays when everything's running straight on clicks and shit or on the computer programs you, you don't get that rhythm the the rhythm is you know the way you walk even though in your arm swing for instance you know even though you got you, five people might walk down the street at the same exact tempo they're all walking differently they each have a different arm they have the shoulders different place their posture is different that's the rhythm and everyone's different and you can't get that through a machine so, but this guy was really sensitive to that and he just kept coming back and kept, and, and one of the things that, that I, I, I want to do on the, that I really strive for in a record is I want, I, I, I want it to be heavy. I want, I want, I want, you know, Bonham. Bonham is like the pinnacle of what it means to be heavy and what it means to be, you know, a rock, a rock band. I mean, Bonham is like Zeppelin. That's why Zeppelin is the best rock band ever. It's because of Bonham. I mean, it's also because of the way Page, you know, his chords and how he arranges and how he writes and how that kind of thing's a total. That's a total factor. And the way Plant kind of just sings with this freedom. That's a total factor as well. But it's Bonham. Um, he just set this standard of heaviness that no one had ever really witnessed before and no one's ever been able to surpass it yet. And it, it, it's, it's almost an anomaly. It's hard to explain. It, it, it's like he, he takes each moment. It, a lot of music is about creating like tension and resolution, tension and resolution. And Bonham has this, this way of taking each moment and, and stretching it out almost like slowing it down and creating this tension in this moment. And that is what's heavy. That, that's what makes, it, makes music heavy is that tension. And, and the only way you can copy Bonham is to slow down as you're doing it. Boom. And that's the only way you can be, yeah, I'm trying to be like Bonham. You have to slow yourself down. Well, if you're slowing every moment down, then the end result is going to be pushed out. That's just mathematics. That's just physics. And Bonham, he's like from another planet. He can slow down every moment. He can, he can put tension in every moment Yet the end result doesn't extend. The end result still. You've got a five-minute song. Every second is pushed. Every second is extended. Every second is heavier. But it still ends at five minutes. 
It's like, oh, that you can't do that. It's impossible. It's a mathematical impossibility. And that's why, but he can do it. And he set that center. Then that's why he's the best drummer, rock drummer ever. That's why he's the premier example. That's why the pyramid goes like this. And Zeppelin's on top and everybody else is underneath it. Um, and it's not, because it, it's not about, heaviness is not about volume. It's not about like more marshals, even though that's cool. Don't get me wrong. It's not about wearing black, man, or worshiping the devil, or putting these things in there, or blood, or just having this eye makeup and chains, and I'm gonna get heavier. That's not what heavy is. And that's what Bonham and Zeppelin express that example that no, that's not what heavy is. I mean, you can put, here's a visual, you can take an aircraft carrier and line it up full of Marshall stacks, put a hundred on there, and put a, a, a quadruple bass drums, there's 10 freaking bass drums or whatever, all set together and get fucking turn them everything up to 11 and get 20 guys out there all dressed in black, man, with, with chains and put some freaking lamb's heads and some blood all around and turn up the chain and, just, and that, that cruiser, man, that, air, that aircraft carrier is just going to go right on down the fucking road. And you put Zeppelin... You bring Bonham back from the dead and you put Bonham on there and fuck, give him a 20 inch bass drum. Give him a fucking 20 and a snare drum and a, and a hi-hat cymbal um, and, 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 and bring Robert and, and, and bring Paige out with a fucking mandolin and, and bring fucking Plant out with some linens, man. You know, twirling his fucking blonde locks singing about, you know, leaves fluttering to the ground or whatever bullshit and, and bring that and then have them start back. And that aircraft carrier is going to go, it's going to list and sink straight to the fucking bottom of the sea. Because it's Bottom's ability to just get that underneath there and and stick that like nobody else can. Um, so anyway, I, I, I strive to do that. You know, that's kind of what I'm trying. I strive to achieve some of that heaviness man i want that shit heavy so this drummer kind of got it you know after playing through the tracks a couple times he was just like no no let me do it again no no let me do it again let, let me do it again so i think we achieved um you know a little bit of that i think i think i achieved a little bit of that which i'm fucking super stoked and then um uh the engineer the producer took the stuff home i split you know it's three days i split and uh, the producer took the stuff home, and uh, he's like put backgrounds on it himself, and played the bass on there, and and then did some little magic on the mix, man. And it fucking kicks ass. I couldn't, I just couldn't be happier with the way everything turned out. Um, so you know, I'm really at peace, man. That's why today I'm just like, I don't know, really feel like working on the house, and I'm, I don't know, I was gonna ride my bike, but then I was like, yeah. I just maybe I have to sit here <laughs> and uh, think because what next you know what is success you know what the fuck man what is what is success it's a different even to, in today's world you know you've always there has to be monetary factor in success there has to be I mean because you can't you don't money doesn't grow on trees i mean you've got to be able to support what it is you want to do so there has to be if, even if it's barter if it's trade value it's not like you know the evil dollar and the and the the eye and the pyramid you know shit or whatever it's, it's, I'm, not, it's, I'm not talking about that it's a, there has to be a trade value there has to be a a balance man of what it is you're doing or you're not successful so i've always like you know i need to i need to make a dollar more than i've spent you know that's like goal number one and if you factor back man shit 30 fucking years that's gonna be that's a shitload of money i need to make um playing music and i'm not even close so how do you make that how do you get that you know go on go on the road and get a following you know there's not that many live clubs and you know how are you gonna pay pros to play with you um you know in order to get the sound that you want um and, you know, where are you going to play? Who are you going to promote yourself with? I mean, just, it's like, all right, I don't know how to say that. You know, become a YouTube sensation. Yeah, right. You know, I mean, you, you got to market yourself. I mean, that's against the man code. So it's like, you know, I don't know what. Become like, have some sort of corporate entity pick you up and pay you. You know, get a song and a movie. <laughs> Fuck, man. You don't, I don't know. I don't know what, what's that definition of success? What is it, what is it that, 
What's that goal? Because you have to have that. Your subconscious has to have that target or it won't act. You'll just be spinning around. So you have to figure it out, you know, what it is you do. And just because, yeah, I love to play and I write a lot, um, is that a goal? You know, I, I don't know. I really don't know. You know, you know you have to do stuff. You gotta have some sort of band to play live. You have to make a record. You have to have that. You have to have some sort of artwork and video involved. You have to have um, an agent promoting your stuff. Um, so those are all known things, but those aren't, those aren't, you know, what, how are those? So those are easy, that's easy, yeah. And I can do all that stuff. That's, those are the next steps. So I'm thinking beyond that. Those are the next steps. But if you don't have a target, then you don't know how those things are going to supposed to interact with each other and what's supposed to come where and how each one can support the other and, and you know and and increase each other's value towards an end goal if you don't have that end goal then you're just going out for no reason or you're just making this and it's not going to go anywhere it's going to go back you know every, i've gone through that too many times and so has everybody else so um i'm looking that's what i'm looking for i'm, I'm looking for the answer man the meaning of life what's what's the meaning of life that's what i'm looking for but man the record turned out sick later